This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education Business Meeting uh, and Strategic Planning Workshop for November 13th, 2018. Uh, we offer the opportunity as we begin for any members of the public that are here in attendance to address the board on any matter. You're welcome to ask a question or make a statement. We ask that you raise your hand and be recognized. And when recognized, step to the podium and give us your name and address. Is there anyone here in attendance who wishes to address the board this evening? Seeing that we have none, we will move on to the remainder of our meeting. Uh, may we please have a motion for approval of our agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Marv and seconded by Larry. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. As the part of this evening's meeting is our strategic planning workshop, that includes blueprint updates from a number of our members of our leadership team, and I will turn it over to Dr. McGowan to begin that process. We need to approve the minutes. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I did, I did jump to that because I saw him walking. Mm -hmm. So before we turn it over to Dr. McGowan, may we have a motion to approve minutes of the October 30th business meeting, please? So moved. Second. Moved by Andrea and seconded by Karen. Does anyone have any corrections, additions, or deletions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Now, Dr. McGowan. Thank you very much. So I have the pleasure of just introducing a couple of quick items here to talk about process and why we're here tonight. So at this point in the year, uh, we do pause to check in and see where we are relative to our summer work. The blueprint, of course, is our strategic plan for the district meant to be iterative, meant to be a conversation that happens throughout the year, uh, meant to be workable and certainly very practical, achievable. These are all items that dictate a lot of the work happening in our committees across the district. The last Monday in June, of course, uh, we gather, all of you were able to gather with many members of our community, over 50 people, to develop the plan based on feedback from the community. We had thought exchange results that helped us really understand how people were feeling about the work that we were doing and the types of things that they thought were important. We took that feedback and the feedback of the people in the room to develop uh, based on our priority areas in the district, uh, workable, again, plans, uh, strategies, so to speak, for each of the areas in the district that are our priorities. The first week in August, then the leadership team and all of you gathered to take a look then at exactly, those were the, the strategies developed were the what's, but they then took a look at the exactly how and when could those things happen relative to resources available in the district committees that would work on uh, the specific strategies that had been developed. In August then, we finalized the charges for each of the committees, um, who would be doing what work to accomplish the goals of the blueprint. September, we essentially commission all of that work with our committees and planning teams, take a look at the work that was done over the summer, and they get to work doing the work and actually carrying out those plans. In November, this is the first checkpoint of the year, so to speak. The time frame coincides nicely. Uh, high school students may or may not agree with the close of the first quarter, so this is the close of our first quarter or two. Report card time, and for us to report out to you uh, the progress that we've made so far in meeting our objectives. We'll check in again with you in February. These reports are happening, though, throughout the year. So blueprint updates happen quite regularly, um, not just at this point, and then recommendations come to you in the springtime. But these are the two formal times where we really focus in for you on, here's where we're at at this checkpoint in the year. We'll come back again in February, and then again in June, where we kind of give you, here's the final um, summary of all the work done throughout the year, which informs then the planning going into the next school year. So without further ado, at the beginning of the meeting tonight, we're hearing uh, from Carolyn Rabideau around the uh, priority, the safety, health, and wellness priority area. And then uh, Dr. Baker, who's going to be talking about curriculum instruction, the regular curriculum, creativity, and innovation area. Later tonight, we're also going to hear from Mr. Limo about uh, the uh, phasing for Council Rock, so the capital improvement part of the project, uh, which is a corollary and related to the blueprint. Uh, it's in. Um, mentioned throughout, but not necessarily one specific priority area. And we'll also be updating on the priority area diversity and equity uh, area, which is a big part of the blueprint plan, but it's a much lengthier report, a lot of detail, and Marla Washington will be presenting that to you later tonight. So we'll start out with Carolyn Rabideau to uh, begin the safety wellness, and then Lou Alima will go from there. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good evening. As Dr. 
Director McGowan was talking through the process uh, and everything that happens with the blueprint. With the mental health piece of that, the work that I'm summarizing tonight is a result of the mental health, uh, mental health services evaluation that we conducted during the 2016-2017 school year. The recommendations were then looked at and vetted by the K-12 Mental Health Steering Committee and subsequently four actions were adopted by the Brighton Blueprint Committee and that's how doc when Dr. McGowan went through the different pieces of the blueprint. So these are all went through the blueprint which were a result of the um, evaluation that was done during that year. The four things that we looked at were adopting a universal social emotional screener to be used as a pre and post test to determine the fidelity of our social emotional interventions. In other words, is what we are doing to support students' social emotional health, is it making a difference? How do we measure that? At this time, we're piloting a screener with students, some students at the middle school, high school, and French Road level. And if your child is going to be screened, you will receive a letter explaining the process and giving you the opportunity to opt out of that screening. We're going to use the information from that screener to determine if this is a useful tool to use district-wide. So this year is a pilot for that screener. We are also, uh, the second thing that came out of that evaluation was looking at how to provide more accessibility to mental health services. And we are lucky enough this year we have a family navigator who connects and refers students to a counselor that comes into our schools, into the high school and into the middle school from Genesee Mental Health. The counselor is covered by the family's insurance, but the great thing is that it happens during the school day, so it reduces those barriers to getting kids to their appointments. And that's um, going really, really well. We will be giving you more details about that in December when our family navigator comes to um, fill you in on those details. She also, the Family Navigator also provides proactive support to TCMS and Brighton High School by running student groups. So she works connecting families, but she also works with families and with students. So we're really excited about that. That is also a pilot program. Let's see how it goes. Is this something that works well in Brighton? Are we able to use these services and does it, does it make the most sense in, in hitting our kids where they need the most support? One of the, uh, the third thing that we looked at was providing tier one social emotional instruction. The program that we ultimately decided on last year is called Second Step. And again, we, last year was our research year. This year is our pilot year. We are piloting a, the social emotional curriculum in grades K through five. These lessons are delivered to every single classroom by our mental health staff. And each class gets a 30 minute lesson per week. It might be on empathy, bullying, how to maintain friendships, all the different topics that would surround social emotional development. We will also be piloting the same program at the middle school beginning in the second semester with a, with a small group of students. So we're looking at how to get that into our schools in grades K through eight. Again, at a later meeting, we will have one of our um, counselors coming to talk more specifically about all of the parts of Second Stop. We're also continuing to develop our Tier 1 Wellness Initiative. Uh, our Brighton Believes is our Tier 1 program. As we all know, the traits of respect, responsibility, self-control, integrity, and kindness are integrated in everything we do with our students. We're continuing to build on these traits with our Brighton Breeze and Brighton Believes in Healthy Choices initiatives. We're teaching kids to breathe and relax and refocus. We're really looking at how do we give students these these skills at a very early level, talking to them at kindergarten and working all the way through the end of high school. And as, as they hear this year after year, they're becoming part of who they are and part of what Brighton does. We support healthy food choices in our cafeteria with Fun Food Fridays at Council Rock and French Road and really good choices um, throughout, the, throughout all of our schools and talking about what, what does that look like, what does nutrition look like for kids. The goal for the 2018-19 school year is to build a dictionary of common phrases that we can use with kids throughout the district to reinforce Brighton Believes. An example of that might be, we don't do that here. This phrase could be used with all students K-12 if when and if a student makes a bad decision. They might knock over somebody's blocks, they might get into an argument with somebody at the middle school. 
it will always work. We don't do that here. Remember, Brighton believes in kindness. We believe that it is our job to ensure that learning takes place as a result of all situations that a student may encounter. So we really want to use that Brighton Believes initiative to continue the learning and to develop the social, those social emotional skills. We'll, we'll be reporting throughout the year on each of these initiatives. The steering committee in conjunction with building faculty and staff will make recommendations to the blueprint committee based on the outcomes we observe with each of these implemented programs. So we're really excited about our pilot year. Are there any questions? Sounds good. Carolyn, I, I just would express thank you for the update and I, I think we really are looking forward to, we realize how much work is involved in the time we spent the past few years getting to where we are and all the pilot work right now and the outside providers that we're working with for the first time. So we're really excited about hearing some more detail. You mentioned December and as we get into the new year, uh, as far as how pilots are going and anticipations of being able to roll younger ages and older ages together. So thank you so much. And I, I think, uh, you know, recently I talked to Dr. McGowan about the updates around this area. And I think so many of our parents and families will be excited and, and really enthused to hear in more detail about these supports that are available uh, as those who are receiving them right now, I'm sure, I'm sure are appreciative of. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm just providing a quick update on our school safety initiatives and our goal, and this is an important goal to kind of lay this out, is to provide continuous monitoring of safety and security procedures to be able to quickly respond um, to the emerging and changing safety and security related um, events that are happening in our society today. So um, while maintaining an open welcoming environment. So that's really the difficult balance in creating our safety procedures as evidenced by the really thoughtful discussion that we had about police presence in schools um, these past couple of months. So we had an objective there that was safety security related and we heard um, loud and clear what some of the um, kind of trade-offs were on the open and welcoming environment. So we're constantly trying to make that uh, appropriate balance with safety security, uh, not compromising on anything safety security related, but making sure that we maintain an appropriate balance for, for who we are. So the work that we're working on or have worked on so far and continue to work on is improving the effectiveness of our building safety teams. Our building principals did really an outstanding job this summer of um, developing their safety teams, identifying the roles that each person in the building is going to play um, when a situation arises. They actually took our um, building level safety plans and we converted it to a one note. So it's a live interactive document that they're all working on, the building safety teams and everyone understands what their role is, where they're supposed to report during a, a situation. And um, an example of that is French Road did an even nicer job and they developed and um, added some annexes to it. So a missing child, for instance. French Road, their safety team went through, all right, what are we gonna do if a child is missing, whether it's at the beginning of the day or the ending of the day, and they developed a safety plan specific to that uh, particular situation. So I couldn't be pleased more with uh, the leadership of our building principals working in partnership with John McCabe, our director of uh, safety and security and making those plans not just put on the shelf but living and breathe them, breathing them and really being familiar with how to respond in a, in a situation. The one thing we're continuing to work on, another thing we're continuing to work on is the threat assessment uh, tools that we have. So the state police issued some guidance last summer about a threat assessment that's being reworked by uh, the FBI and other agencies. So we're waiting some more guidance on that. But again, our building safety teams are listening to the concerns that are coming forward from uh, school community stakeholders and responding to those, triaging those and, and putting an appropriate plan into place. Uh, monitoring and, and implementing evolving guidance related to emergency response procedures. Again, as uh, unfortunately after each tragedy, safety plans and procedures are looked at. We are still acting on uh, the, the recommendations from the state police um, dated several years now. But as those evolve and as recommendations come out from whether it's state education department, state police, FBI, we'll work in partnership with our first responders to evolve our, um, our response procedures. The one work that we will begin in 2018-19 is on the capital end. I reported last year that we invested significantly in upgrading our hardware, um, 
door locking mechanisms, uh, safety glass. Um, we'll continue to do that evaluation and that assessment of our facilities and making sure that we have a, a capital plan in place where we can respond to those emerging threats and um, safety security risks. So that's work that will be ongoing and led by building safety teams and certainly reported back to the district safety committee. Any questions on, on safety security blueprint? Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate the update. And now I'm going to be reporting on the areas of rigorous coursework and our instructional technology work. Um, much of this work, um, it, it was kind of nice this year to really think about the, fruit, um, the fruits of the labor that have gone into place for the last three years and the board will notice that much of it is now actually hitting the buildings. Um, we start uh, with the blueprint conversation, it moved into curriculum council to kind of fine tune and hone those conversations and identify what we felt were going to be best practices. And then this year, it's, much of this work has, as I said, moved into the building. The first um, is in the area of grading and reporting. The board will recall three years ago that curriculum council developed um, a district-wide philosophy um, with respect to our grading and reporting and, and how we're doing. And so this year, um, Council Rock and French Road are implementing somewhat of a modified report card that aligns to that. The work with, um, is continuing. Allison and Matt continue to head up a committee with the idea this year we'll really move towards a, a solid standards-based uh, report card system. Um, again, moving more towards that, that you know, uh, codification, if you will, of the philosophy. At the middle school, the grading committee worked last year to operationalize some of the recommendations and that what that what ended up happening was this year and you might have heard Rob talk about it in a PTSA meeting they have shifted the way they are actually um, I'm going to say uh, producing the grades for the report cards so that 80% of the grades um, are reflective of more summative type work, whereas 20% are more formative type work, uh, the homework policies, et cetera. And that really is in line to the philosophy as, as it was written. And then at the high school, they are working on thinking about homework and thinking about the reasons behind homework and seeing if there's any shifts that can be made um, with respect to that. Again, um, for the last couple of years, we've really been taking a look at um, our, our enrollments in our advanced or our AP courses, starting as young as um, at Council Rock, um, extended studies, all the way up through French Road and through the high school. And that was one of the goals, was to really make sure that all of our students had opportunities in that area. As a result of that, last year's K-12 committee, math committee, um, uh, modified the referral process to be more inclusive and they are at, they are using that process this year um, when they're thinking about identifying students who might benefit from um, an accelerated math class and so we're going to look watch those data to see if they have any impact um, with respect to uh, the makeup of, our, of those classes in the area of providing alternative coursework um, we at the high school, we have a new elective. Um, Beth, I think you're going to be mentioning it tonight. Uh, Understanding by Design is a collaboration between our high school technology education department and the art department. A little bit more about that in Beth's report, but um, so far they have, they've got a great enrollment and the kids are having a really good time learning about the science of design and what makes up that. In the area of personalized learning, we this year are running um, an online physical education course as in somewhat of an alternative program, as well as we have two English electives that are available for students. Um, these aren't widespread. They're really available for certain populations of students who, for whatever reason, may not be able to attend um, our regular English 12 electives. But again, thinking about this way, this notion of personalizing or individualizing opportunities for kids, this is one way that we've been able to do that. New this year um, really is going to continue to expand our, um, our thinking around culturally responsive pedagogies and instruction. And so the Curriculum Council, we have a subgroup this year looking specifically at cultural competence and culturally responsive curriculum development. And this, uh, this committee has been tasked with developing a set of tools that will be then used in subsequent years um, during our unit design, our curriculum design process. In addition, we're looking at, and again, this goes back to the report card conversation, 
there's a, a group of curriculum council tasked with looking at how do we separate out assessing academic from non-academic behaviors because right now in many ways those are all um, amalgamated together if you will to get the final grade and so ultimately our goal is going to be to figure out how to best separate those two so that when students see their grades they know what they know right that's the achievement aspect of it and they also know about some of those softer behavioral skills and what, how they're developing in those areas In the area of instructional technology, there are four main areas that we're working on. One, I would say, this ensuring that all students have um, access to appropriate technologies. This, again, is just the ongoing work of, um, of uh, um, building out our uh, device tablet distribution. This year, all 8th, 9th, and 10th graders received um, devices. Next year, again, we'll be going up into the 11th grade. Teachers are being trained, and we're starting to see um, uh, real uh, fruits of, the, of all the hard work the teachers are putting in with regards to what the kids are being able to do. We're ensuring that our students have the necessary skills. This year, we're putting in place a scope and sequence of skills in each one of the grades to ensure that, this, that students are developing those skills um, in alignment with the ISTE standards. We're providing extenuated, um, or not extended, but extended professional development opportunities, continuing to provide those just next week. Um, the annual Nice Skate Conference, which is the New York State Computer and Technology Educators Conference, um, we, is being very, very well attended. We capitalize on that every year as a, as a, um, a really uh, 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 exceptional professional development um, opportunity. In the past, we have had our um, teachers present at this. This year, we actually have our Gen Bar students from the high school. They um, presented here last year to the board, so you're familiar with this group. They actually have a workshop, workshop session on their own at 1.30 on Monday. And then um, finally, Mike Leener is um, leading a group, again, as a subcommittee of curriculum council, to assess the impact of technology. You know, we're three, four years under our belt. We really need to step back and say, what, are, you know, what benefits are we getting from these devices, from the increased access, and so developing an assessment process for that. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very much, Debbie. And, and to all who presented, and a reminder, as was mentioned earlier, we will in our uh, community forum uh, to be held a little bit later, uh, we will provide full updates on our K-12 facilities project along with our diversity equity initiative. So we do appreciate not only the updates, but the work that's being done every single day specific to the blueprint planning. So that, that, thank you for uh, providing us a, a detailed summary this evening to everybody. So we move on now to a number of our reports for this evening. Um, our financial reports um, you have in front of you, we received earlier from Lou, his executive summary that he customarily puts together on budget status, along with the treasurer's report uh, for the period ending September 30th from Lou and Dahlia. Um, may we have a motion, please, to uh, receive those reports? So moved. Second. Moved by Marv, seconded by Karen. Does anyone have any question or comment or anything for Lou on either of the reports? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, this evening we have a guest for our student representative report, and we welcome Elizabeth Callahan. Hi, um, my name is Elizabeth Callahan. Um, I'm representing Tula tonight. She unfortunately could not be here, um, except she wrote a short student report on behalf of the high school, so I'll read that now. The school year is finally starting to get in the swing of things. Today is the last day of the quarter, so everyone is trying to finalize grades. It has been a hectic week for students and teachers, but it should calm down soon. The seniors have been kind of struggling with classes between college applications and copious amounts of homework. This weekend, boys soccer finished their season by earning their way to the state's tournament, which they unfortunately lost in the semifinal game on Saturday. Um, and now the only fall sport that's still in session is swimming and diving, which has states coming up shortly. Everyone is excitedly anticipating Thanksgiving break, and overall the student body is moving smoothly through the year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, and we thank you for pinch hitting this evening. We appreciate that. Um, next up, uh, our Board of Education reports, our standing committee reports, because of because of an anomaly in the way we put the schedule together this year, we 
did a full report out on all these areas just two weeks ago. And um, so our standing committee reports from Monroe County School Boards Association, Labor Relations and Information Exchange will be meeting. Uh, information Exchange tomorrow, as a matter of fact. And then Labor a week from tomorrow, I believe? 28th. 28th. Uh, Legislative Committee, however, did meet. We met last Wednesday, Karen. We did meet last Wednesday. It was a great day to meet because it was the day after the election. Mm -hmm. and, uh, given the nature of our work, we had a lot to talk about. So given the changing nature of the makeup of the state Senate and um, a, a shift in some of our representatives in the area, one of our main goals will be to uh, get to know what that changing landscape looks like for education talked about our upcoming trip, uh, our one-day trip to Albany, December 10th, um, and setting our priorities for that day, which, you know, from my perspective, would largely include really getting to know um, who our new folks are, and <coughs> letting them know what our priorities are, namely school safety, um, the mental health landscape, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, funding the Albany Road that's, that's a good summary and it's a good point. I think one of the points that you make too, Karen, we've talked about it a little bit, but it, for those of us who have been doing this for a while, it is a very different landscape now um, in New York State in terms of both the Senate and, and the Assembly to one extent. You know, with Joe Morelli moving on and representing us now in Congress, uh, Jamie Romeo um, is our new uh, Assembly person, and Joe Roback was reelected as our uh, member of Senate. Uh, however, now that Joe is part of a minority party, uh, so the, the challenges around specific to the work that we do around funding for schools and regulation uh, of schools, it's, it's going to be different. Um, we're used to a certain way to do things and certain people who are in certain places, and that's all different now. So one of the things that we talked about, and I know Monroe County School Board has talked about it at the officer level quite a bit, is developing new relationships and also um, figuring out ways to work with um, leadership in Albany that doesn't represent Monroe County, if you will. Right, our uh, state is, it yeah, is it's, it's, less of a voice right now, so we need to work on making sure we to get, get our voices heard, right? So it'll be a challenge, it'll be a little bit different, and uh, we'll, we'll move forward with that. So uh, thank you, and thank you for that report out. Um, I don't think BOCES uh, has met either since we reported out last meeting. Nothing. And again, our other board member reports, we did a full update on all of our activities uh, just two weeks ago. I don't know if anybody has anything to add of, of something that they've attended or worked on recently that, uh, does anybody care No. Right, everything, it's a, we, were, we, we, we reported out two weeks ago, it's been fairly quiet the last two weeks with activity. but. That's a good point, too, and we'll hear about that a little bit later, but the Diversity Equity Committee, the district-wide committee, has three subcommittees that are ongoing and working, and our hiring practices subcommittee meets tomorrow morning uh, in a full meeting, too. So uh, thank you for reminding us on that group. Uh, does anyone else have anything else on the board members right now? Nope. Okay, then. Um, we will move along, and uh, Bright Teachers Association. Hi. Hi, down there, Beth. I How know. We're at French Road, and it's We're a little great. different to you, but it's okay. It's all right. It was great to just be able to walk down the hallway today to attend the meeting, which was great. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to remind everybody that this report also is on the website, so if you think something has been missed, go ahead and double-check that. So I have a few things. Um, our French Road health teacher, Janice Mix, she wanted to let everybody know that in their health classes, students have listened and talked about a book called I Am Peace, and this is a book all about being mindful, so bringing literacy back into the classroom through all the content area is really exciting. Um, pet therapy started in the 1211 behavioral classroom at Council Rock um, through Therapy Dogs International. Kim Ball, school counselor at Council Rock, has a therapy dog of her own and came in and did a PowerPoint lesson prior to it starting. And the kids are able to read to the dog or sit with the dog to calm themselves. TDI is coming in two times per month for one hour, and the dog is named Cece, so that's exciting for them. Ellen Harp, our technology instructor here at French Road, um, through a Brighton Educational Fund grant, she purchased um, Arduino computers, and she's introducing them to the tech classes through a series of hands-on projects, 
including this uh, month in, or last month in October, she was doing controlled singing pumpkins, so they're working with that. Um, and she, as I reported out last month, she was doing a conference at SUNY As We Go about that as well. The sixth grade extended study students worked with Kids Miracle Making Club to raise money for CP of Rochester by painting pumpkins that were featured at the Eastfield Mall Al Siegel Walkabout on Sunday, October 28th. And students showcased an original theme that displayed their understanding of the components of creativity, fluency, flexibility, originality, and elaboration by painting pumpkins that were donated through Wegmans. And groups also competed for the title Most Creative through an online link that encouraged voters to donate. And the rest of those pumpkins were donated to CP of Rochester when it was done. Also, the TCMS 7th grade extended study students visited the Memorial Art Gallery on Friday, October 26th. Students viewed the Esther Crinitz Fabric of Survival exhibit to better understand storytelling through unconventional media. Crinitz, a Holocaust survivor, chronicled her life in Poland before and during the war through these fabric collages, and students then created their own stories of diversity on fabric squares inspired by Crinitz's work. And they were very excited to show those. Students in Miss Eden's, Mrs. Godfrey's, Miss Mass. Ms. Mazes and Ms. Shams and Mr. Simmons' fifth grade class, they participated in writing letters for mail call for the honor flight. That was also discussed last month as well, so there's more information on the website about that. Again, Ms. Mazes' class, fifth grade here at French Road, those students with Mr. Simmons' fifth grade classes watched a presentation about Tourette syndrome, and presented. it was presented and created by two students in their classes. The boys shared what makes them similar, how they love pets, they enjoy building, but also then explained that they were also similar because they had uh, Tourette syndrome, the two of them. They helped explain Tourette syndrome in a child-friendly format that was accessible to their peers. They ended the presentation with a Q&A, and many of their service providers were able to watch the presentation along with their moms and older siblings. It was awesome to see these boys talking about themselves and the needs to normalize their lives at fifth grade. <clears throat> The Mosaic Club from TCMS and Brighton High School sponsored an evening with Mr. West Cosgrove from Rural Migrant Ministries on November 1st, and over 60 students and their parents came to learn about the issues migrant workers face in upstate New York. In addition to being a club-sponsored activity, it tied in with critical literacy, literacy texts being read to 6th grade students in the ELA and social studies and 11th and 12th grade ELA classes. Um, the Understanding Design class, which Dr. Baker was talking about, welcomed the second round of guest speakers to class on Monday, October 29th. Joel Rawson and Melissa Warp, new media design professors from RIT, and both parents of Brighton District students, spoke with the class in depth about the field of design. The students found the presentation to be informative and relevant, as many of them are considering a future career in that particular area. Also, the collaboration with School of Education students at St. John Fisher. Students in Ms. Concetto's ELA classes read a nonfiction text that relates to their thematic unit on change. The college students also read the same text and came to TCMS to discuss the reading with the sixth graders. A variety of discussions, strategies were used, including working on dialectical notebook, and this is strategy for the Bard Institute for Writing and Thinking. Um, our fourth grade teachers, Robin Leckenby and Jessica Willis, they used a new strategy for um, launching a writing project. So they used a hands-on, build a small moment activity to start their personal narrative. They brought in materials such as clay, pipe cleaners, googly eyes, recycled craft supplies, anything that they could find in the classroom. And the kids were to brainstorm small moments, sketch out their scene, and once they had done that, they were going to begin to create that small moment. They came back to it on day two, thinking about what they could add, delete, or change, which is really um, connected to the revision process. And then on the third day, students, they're going to continue editing by writing um, post-it notes from their projects that they created. The TCMS Recycling Club is working with Impact Earth, making planters out of recyclable materials, milk cartons, and juice containers from the TCMS cafeteria. Sarah Quirk from Impact Earth is pictured here, and that is also on the website to the students, uh, showing the students how to reuse those materials. Brighton colleagues had the great privilege of spending the day with Benna Kalik, co-founder co of Habits of Mind, and they learned more about personalized learning and how Habits of Mind are crucial for students to drive the learning and engage in meaningful and rigorous, rigorous challenges. 
And finally, Katie Lambert from TCMS, the library has received a Monroe number one BOCES School Library System mini grant of $1,200, and the grant is intended for the purchase of diverse and inclusive materials for the library, which reflect the windows and mirrors metaphor developed by Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop. The metaphor suggests that students experience text as mirrors, providing a reflection of themselves, and windows through which students can see the experiences of a diverse group of others. Many thanks to our SIS for making grant funding available. That's it. <coughs> Thank you very much. Sure. We appreciate Thanks, that. Our PTSA report, Leslie. You don't have that much since we just reported two yeah. weeks ago. We but all reported on that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. PTSA had a uh, record beginning of the year in spirit wear sales. We've sold over $11,000 of merchandise between homecoming and the last online sale. We will be holding another sale in the spring with new items for order. Um, PTSA has begun hosting their meetings with the principal for parent information and questions in all four of the buildings. Topics covered uh, thus far have been the ACT, SAT, uh, new grading system, how to survive middle school, extended study services and accelerated math, promoting independence in children, what to do if your child is struggling in school, extracurricular activities for everyone, and year start overviews. Upcoming meeting topics include vaping at BHS, technology at TCMS, Impact Earth and the recycling efforts in the district, including a recipe exchange featuring foods from Fun Food Friday at French Road, and Council Rock is taking parent suggestions for topics to be covered in future meetings. Our central PTSA meeting will be tomorrow, November 14th at 9.30 a.m. Dr. Marla Washington, our district's new diversity consultant, will be our guest and will speak at the meeting. Um, in the schools, um, BHF PTSA, um, Dr. Hall held his first culture, climate, diversity, and equity meeting with BHS. The PTSA attended as silent observers in order to remain sensitive and aware of student needs and concerns. Uh, BHS PTSA is hosting the BHS Staff Appreciation Luncheon on December 14th. Uh, BHS PTSA and Dr. Hall want to encourage FRES and TCMS parents to attend one of the vaping presentations on November 27th at noon and 6 p.m. Um, they feel this is a very important issue for our community to address. Um, at TCMS, the TCMS PTSA hosted a Veterans Day reception for five veterans who have ties to Brighton and who spoke in an assembly for seventh graders who will be participating in the honor flight. Uh, PTSA decorated the library classroom, picked up coffee, cider, and donuts, and mingled with the veterans. Uh, the TCMS PTSA will be helping with a new student reception on Monday, November 11th during winning period. Uh, they're coordinating volunteers to help with an ice cream social at French Road. Uh, the Fres PTSA had the kids vote on election day for their choice of movie for Fres Family Movie Night in the Battle of the Sequels. Incredibles 2 won, and it ended up being a record crowd in attendance. They sold 14 pizzas and popped popcorn nonstop from 4 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. Uh, the Fres PTSA sponsored their first Fun Food Friday of the year, offering pumpkin seeds and pepitas to the kids to try on their way into lunch. Kids loved them. They couldn't believe they were green and yet still tasted so good. Um, at Council Rock, Council Rock PTSA held, also held their first Fun Food Friday. They are hoping to work demonstrations into future presentations. For example, having kids sample grapefruit and then learning how to eat the flesh with a special spoon. Um, the Council Rock PTSA's recycling helpers have suggested a Crayola color cycle program where dried out markers are collected. They don't have to be Crayola brand. And then shipped back to Crayola to be recycled. They are hoping to help the kids understand the importance of their role in protecting the environment. That's it. Thank you very much. Long list always. All right, uh, Dr. McGowan, Superintendent's Report. Thank you. A couple quick items. First, thanks to Mike Paxson, Bill Moyer, and Kyle Greger for getting us set up here tonight. We're Really appreciate it, gentlemen. This is not easy, but it's a great way for us to be able to be out and about in the district. So thank you for that. We're big big on the road. You got it. <laughs> Kim Lanspam, of course, also, and Dan Goldman, who uh, helped to make this all happen. Can't tell you how much we appreciate that. And word is Lou got his workout in with a lot of chair stacking uh, at a time. Probably, probably others as well. So thank you. 
Um, congratulations, of course, to the many athletic teams that did really well. I know that Elizabeth mentioned several of these, and uh, I know that uh, the soccer team did well, volleyball went pretty far, uh, swimming and diving continues, cross country did well, really successful season. But also congratulations to those uh, students of ours who participate in the visual performing arts. Recently, uh, the high school, of course, had a performance, middle school's coming up this weekend, and concert season is upon us. In addition, many students have uh, chosen uh, to perform locally for the um, RYPO and I believe Hoxton, right? I'm saying it the wrong way. HYSO and RPYO. ASAP there, VIPs. So, <laughs> yep. I, you know, as an educator with a lot of letters, but whether it's APPR or you name it, we do it. So I should have gotten those right. But kids chose, in, um, of, of course, including Lizzie Hatch, which we're very excited about. So, um, our kids are doing really well all over the place in and out of the classroom, so congratulations to all of them. And uh, to our Blue Ribbon recipients at the high school, of course, I think Dr. Hall is here tonight. Uh, that ceremony was last Thursday in Washington, D.C. Uh, school, of course, being recognized for excellence among schools across the country. A really exciting ceremony. Um, so way to go, BHS. But also to all of our staff, K through 12, who contributes to that, certainly, as our kids get there and perform at a high level. It's a real team effort, whether it's parents, community members, our kids, and our staff throughout the entire district. So congratulations to everyone. Also to BHS teacher Amy Malloy for her nomination by Sachi Sharp, BASU president, and winning the Golden Apple Award. Um, congratulations to her as well. And finally, just a moment to say thanks on behalf of the district to all of our veterans uh, who live in the district and everywhere who have given service to us. Uh, I know many people in the room have uh, either served or have relatives who have served. Ms. Swagman's here today, thanks to your brother, and the many veterans who give their uh, time, talent, and service on behalf of our country and provide for the common defense, which certainly supports this act of democracy uh, here today and public education for all kids. We appreciate their service as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Kevin. We appreciate that. And certainly the messaging to our veterans. You know, one of the very uh, fortunate aspects of living in the town of Brighton is we have a very active community of veterans who choose to reside here. They help in our schools, but they help in so many different ways uh, within the community, and we are very, very fortunate for their service continuing. Uh, next up, we have a number of policies this evening that we're going to work through. Um, it is that season. Uh, we have five different uh, first reads that we're going to go through. Um, so I will ask, we'll, we'll take them in order, and we'll put down anything that we have no this evening. And then we'll also, they will remain open, come back for a second read at a later date for approval of the board at that point in time. So first off, may I have a motion, please, for approval of first read of policy 5140 under our non-instructional business operations section, administration of the budget. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved by Marv, seconded by uh, Andrea. Everybody's on different sides to me. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting policy. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time with it tonight. It'll come back for a second read and actually eventually um, we'll have more discussion about it as a district because it will in involve some things that will affect us. It has to do with uh, the phased in requirements now, uh, both federally and at the state level, but mostly the state level that are going to affect us first, with regard to submitting annually detailed statements on funding uh, per school building in each district. And we will be ha will we be required to begin doing this year after next, correct? So correct, Kevin will be that final group. So this will affect us. We'll talk about it a little bit more in detail. But this particular policy is to make way for that to occur. So uh, does anybody have any questions further tonight or anything on that particular policy? It's just a, we did find a couple of there was a, typo a small typo that will funnel through the system. I think we already are well. Okay, thank you for that, Karen. Uh, then all in favor, please. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. A motion, please, for approval of first read of policy 6214 under personnel, uh, registration, and professional development. So moved. Moved by Karen and seconded by Christina. Uh, this policy uh, has to do with a change in law with regard to school business leaders <laughs> and for also consistency and clarity with regulation. And um, you see in our summary there specifically uh, where and how uh, that, that that was required. Does anybody have anything further on that this evening? 
Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then a motion, please, to uh, for first read approve uh, policy seven five one two under the student section with regard to student physicals. So moved. Moved by Adrian, seconded by Larry. Um, this has uh, the purpose of uh, conflicting, clean, cleaning up some conflicting timing uh, with regard to students' dental certificates uh, that exist in education law and commissioner regulations. So now this is requested, this will be requested at the same time as other health certificates. Uh, anything further on that policy? Does anybody have a question or comment? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. A motion, please, for approval. First read, policy 7260. Again, the student section having to do with designation of person and parental relation. So moved. Moved by Karen and seconded by Christina. Uh, this policy is a change in the general obligations law of New York State and has to do with the period of time that a designation can be made. And you see that that change from uh, six months to 12 months. Um, does anybody have anything further on that policy or question or comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And then also, finally, a, a motion to approve first read policy 7222, student section, with regard to diploma or credential options for students with disabilities. So moved. Second. And moved by Karen, seconded by Larry. And this is a policy we, we have dealt with uh, previously on a couple of changes, but this also is a being amended so that the policy language now uh, allows for future and regular legal updates because there are many in this area of policy. Yeah, we actually, it was over the last year and a half, there were a number of changes and updates in law, law and regulation to this. And, and this, you'll see, as you've seen when you've read through it, the language now regarding diploma and credential options was deleted. So it's broader language and shortened to provide for adjustment and change and application locally. So does anyone have anything further? Question or comment? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. And we also have now this evening four uh, policies on second read, uh, policies that we previously approved first read on. Um, I will say before we get into these four, I have not gotten anything new on any of these four areas, so when we reach each one, if there's anything that anybody has that has newly come to them, let me know. Um, a motion, please, for approval of second read and approval on policy 6121, personnel, sexual harassment in the workplace. So we'll move. Second. Moved by Mark, seconded by Larry. Uh, again, second read, we have uh, reviewed this previously. Um, Anything further? Does anybody have any further questions this evening? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion, please, please for a second read and approval. Policy 5412, non-instructional and business operations, having to do with procurement, uniform grant guidance for federal awards. So moved. Second. Moved by Karen and seconded by Andrea. Uh, again, second read on that. We had dealt with this one also previously. Uh, with regard to federal grants. Does anybody have any questions or anything further? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. A motion please for approval, second read and approval, final approval, policy 5730, non-instructional business operations with regard to the transportation of students. So moved. Moved by Larry, seconded by Christina. Uh, again, second read. Uh, this is uh, this is the section that we amended to take into account uh, the ballot initiative last year that allowed us to purchase uh, a few different vehicles of transportation that our that our staff will be able to use with students. Uh, does anybody have any further question or comment in these areas? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And then finally, finally tonight in the policy realm, a motion, please, to approve second and final read policy seven one three one. Students with regard to education of students in temporary housing. So moved. Second. Moved, moved by Andrea, seconded by Karen. Um, again, that completely redid a policy and replaced it with a current policy. We did that in a previous first read. Does anybody have anything further to add or any questions on that area? That all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. 
policy work for this evening. Thank you very much, everyone. Our consent agenda this evening, may we please have a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed? So moved. Second. Moved by Larry, seconded by Marv. Uh, you'll see the usual types of things in there. And we do have one gift in here this evening, and a little bit interesting. We appreciate from Supercuts. Supercuts Super gave us a gift of a curry coffee machine, coffee filter pods, along with Supercut gift cards um, to be utilized in our faculty kitchen uh, at Brighton High School. So we appreciate that from the Monroe Avenue Brighton location of, of the uh, Supercuts folks. And with that, a motion please to approve. Did I get, no, we have a motion to approve the concession. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. McGowan, anything else further before we adjourn? Nope. Any board members, anything further business? I will remind folks that we are about to adjourn. We will reconvene shortly, 7 p.m. for our community forum, which will include updates on two of the areas that we talked about. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn at this point. Second. Moved by Larry, seconded by Mar. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening and welcome to the uh, Brighton Board of Education Community Forum for November 13th. Uh, this evening, uh, we've decided to try a little different. We've been holding Board of Education Community Forums for the last few years, uh, twice a year, normally at the central office following a regularly scheduled board meeting. But we decided uh, this fall to <coughs> bring the format a little bit differently to the community. So we're here at French Road to utilize the cafetorium. Uh, parking's a little bit easier, the space is a little bit easier for folks. And we're also hopeful that uh, after uh, we have updates in the two areas that we'll talk about, uh, we can break into uh, a little bit smaller groups for some conversation and listening to members of the community on topics raised this evening or anything else that the community folks, that you, those of you here in attendance would like to bring up. So what we are going to do is uh, we're filming this evening. We're not live on television, but we are filming and we'll have the video from tonight posted to our uh, YouTube channel uh, the next day or so. So people will be able to access that. Uh, we are going to provide updates to the community this evening on two very important areas of our priority area of strategic planning, the blueprint areas. One of those being the K-12 facilities construction and modernization program. We're going to receive an update on that. And then we're also going to receive an update on uh, the initiatives involved in our diversity equity uh, priority area also. So I will turn it over to Dr. McGowan to get things started. Um, and welcome, those of you that were able to make it this evening. So thank you very much. I think you've introduced it well. I'll start out asking uh, Lou Lima, our Assistant Superintendent for Administration, to come on up and introduce our team from campus, give us an update on facility improvement project, specifically the phasing approach at Council Rock. One thing I will add, what we'd like to do this evening is uh, hold your questions or comments. Uh, as we mentioned, we're going to have uh, an update right now on our facilities project and then an update on our <coughs> diversity equity initiatives. Uh, then we're going to have opportunity for community discussion and smaller group discussion. And in that period of time, any question, comment that you'd like to either make or your question you have, whether it be these two areas or anything else with regard to the district, you can bring it up at that time when we're going to be listening and taking down notes. So thank you very much. Lou. Good evening. So what we have tonight is, or who we have tonight is our construction managers from Campus Construction. And what they're going to do, provide for the Board of Education and the community, is outline the construction phasing schedule for the capital project that was approved by the voters in May of 2017. So what they're going to do is give you an idea of the scope, what's going to be accomplished in each of the space, the constructability of that, and what the impact may be on program and community impact. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to John Limbeck and Malika Dobbins, our construction managers from, from campus. And they'll take you through each building uh, so you have an uh, understanding in, uh, of what's happening in each school. Good evening, everybody. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to come in tonight and update you uh, as to where we are. Uh, developing phasing plans is a very large part of our business because it, it, it lays out for the contractors and the district uh, the, the process that we'll take going through the three years that will be under construction. 
So we've started out with the um, the French Road Elementary School, and uh, I apologize, the quality uh, isn't what it really should be. But we're going to we're going to start out in 2019. Okay. Uh, this area that's cross hatched over here. The reason it's cross hatched is because we have asbestos on the roof there, and we're going to start that uh, the summer of 2019. We'll get that taken off, and there's nobody in school. Uh, we'll get the new roof started. The rooms, the rooms underneath it are all classrooms that are getting renovated. Uh, there'll be lighting, uh, different renovations that go on. Uh, the lighting renovations in, the in, in this building here will go on for two years, and those will be happening uh, during, the, uh, during the school year. It'll be on second shift. They'll come in after the students and the teachers are gone. They'll work until 11 o'clock, and that keeps us uh, working throughout the year. Uh, we've got uh, several other areas here. Uh, in the summer of 2019, um, we're going to be doing uh, several men's rooms, ladies' rooms. You'll see these two right here in the middle. They have um, red around those because there's asbestos in those, and uh, those are going to be four-month renovations. What we're doing with the bathrooms in this building and throughout the district We've actually got 51 bathrooms throughout the three buildings um, that SCI is taking care of, and we will be working with the district to take those offline during the year. Uh, no asbestos, obviously, in those, but uh, it allows the contractors to work on second shift to get those done. So um, this summer, this area over here, we're going to be doing some lighting renovations there as well. Uh, the corridors, uh, they get all new ceilings and the new lights in those areas. And uh, we'd be going on to the second year now. Uh -oh. Now I'm in trouble. How do I get that to go to the next one? You want to go to the different school? No, just to the next slide. Just scroll down. Oh, just You're scroll down. down. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And then in the summer of 2020, uh, these rooms, uh, this is uh, the room that we're in right now. We're going to be taking out that wall and the wall, the uh, folding wall that comes out. We'll be putting the new sections of bleachers in there and finishing up the rest of the renovations in the classrooms. Um, this is um, the <coughs> one uh, difficulty that we're going to have at French Road. Come on. Just scrolling down to the next shot, though. The site plan. Nope, it's the last page of it. Yeah. It doesn't come no. in. Oh, that, okay. Um, this picture right here is actually an aerial view of the school and the campus. And what we've done on this, and we'll do this for each one of the buildings for each individual summer because it gives the principals and the staff uh, a much better view of what's going to be happening that summer. And what we've done here, this is the uh, building right here. This is the parking lot just outside of us here. This is going to be dedicated to teacher and staff parking. Uh, we're having contractor parking in this area here. We've got uh, dumpsters where they're going to be located during the various summers. And uh, for this one here, because we've got asbestos removal, that'll all be coming out of the back of the building. We're actually going to take this playground offline, and uh, we'll be using that for a truck entrance this coming summer. But again, uh, because of the children that are in the area, we'll have people out there that are, you know, making sure that everybody's segregated. Okay. Going on to the middle school, um, this again is the work that's planned for the summer of 2019. Uh, we're going to do uh, the asbestos floor tile removal. We're going to do the kitchen and the cafeteria renovations in this first summer. Um, again, we've got different rooms. Uh, that, a lot of the rooms have asbestos in them, but it's only the asbestos that's in the sinks underneath the uh, cabinets. So uh, we really got limited asbestos work, which is nice for us. And another thing these do is, um, it, you can't really see it real well here, but um, 
Malika's put these boxes in here that spells out the work in each individual room uh, so everybody is aware of what's happening where, when, and why. Uh, this is another view. Uh, this will be the uh, summer of 2020 that we'll be working in that room here. And we'll be doing uh, art and science classroom renovations as well at that time. We've got little pockets all throughout here, which are bathrooms. And again, the bathrooms are going to be handled uh, throughout the year on a second shift uh, to stay away from the uh, programs that are going on. And this is um, the last view that we've got of the middle school. Um, again, we've got art and science room uh, restorations, and that's actually going to be happening in 2020. And again, more bathrooms uh, that will be taken care of. And also at the middle school, we've got two stair towers that will get completely brand new railings and whatnot, uh, more of a safety upgrade than anything else. This is the high school. Pardon? The ground floor. Yeah, this is the ground floor. And uh, this is the lower gymnasium and corridor area. Um, we've got quite a bit of uh, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning work that has to go on in that room. We have uh, new plumbing that's going on in that room. Uh, this shower room that's in this area here, this is a pretty ugly area right now. Uh, there's a lot of old marble in there. It's not used very often. Uh, a lot of asbestos. This is going to be a six-month renovation in here, but working with the district, these are very, um, they're not used very much at all. So uh, we could do that. We'll get the asbestos out during the summertime, uh, and then we'll do the renovations afterwards. This is the first floor. Our biggest challenge for the high school is the auditorium. We've got we've got asbestos in there. We've got to take. We're basically taking that that room down to nothing. Um, we've got asbestos. We got to take care of. We've got all of the uh, seating that has to come out. We've got more asbestos in this area up here. Uh, the district working with us. We're going to take over this area on April 13th. Uh, next spring, and we'll have that until we're giving it back to the district November 1st. And, and you know, we've worked through that plan with the district. Uh, one of our biggest challenges are the science rooms. Uh, we've got five right here, and when we get to the next slide, we've got another four up above that. Those uh, cannot be done separately. This is something that because of the uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and the services that go into those, that's a five-month renovation. So uh, we're working with the district right now. This is a large science classroom here that will be renovated. Uh, we're looking at options to perhaps uh, split this, put classes in here. One of the biggest goals we've got is minimizing disruption to programs. So uh, we'd, we'd rather take you know an extra two months, get everything done, and that way we don't have disruptions uh, two or three summers in a row. This, um, this is the upper section of the uh, auditorium that will be taken care of uh, at the same time in that six-month window we've got. We've got bathrooms here that are primarily used for the auditorium. Again, a lot of asbestos that has to be taken care of. We'll do that during the summer and then uh, take care of the renovations of that um, while we're doing the auditorium itself. Uh, here are the other science rooms that we have to deal with. And then in the summer of 2021, we'll finish up these areas here, renovating, uh, just putting the different finishes and whatnot in there that they require. Now, <laughs> this is Council Rack. And we've told the principal, we've told the staff that we're basically going to turn this building upside down, shake it, put it back down. And um, I'm going to start right here as we come in Roland Parkway. We're going to be having a series of neighborhood meetings with those folks coming up very soon 
to let them know what the impacts are going to be because this is the safest place for us to bring construction traffic into this site and keep it uh, away from the front where the kids are getting dropped off. Now remember, this is what this is going to look like when it's completed. Uh, down in this area here, the first thing I have to do, and I hope to start this in February, is get all of the underground drainage that's in this area reworked. Uh, some of it's the town, some of it's the school districts. We have to segregate that and get it out of the way so that we can start excavating for the addition here. And uh, we'll start that addition um, summer of 2019, and this is an 18-month installation right here. Another thing that we have to do over in this area here, there is a transformer right now that belongs to RG&E. RG&E is uh, making the district put in this access road so they've got access to their transformer. These playgrounds that are over here, um, they are a little bit too close to the construction area. I mean, we've got little kids over there. So again, working with the district, we've identified this area of the campus where we'll be able to have the children come out and uh, do their playtime activities. Um, this area here, once I get the uh, utilities rerouted, this area is going to be the lay down area for the construction equipment. We'll have trailers in there, we'll have material, uh, we'll, have, we'll do the parking for the contractors in that area. So then the first summer, you see all of this yellow area. This is the existing parking area now. We're going to take uh, the existing asphalt off. We're going to do all the utility work, the drainage, because a lot of it ties in back here. And we're going to put this in, in this configuration, uh, with the, the base layer of asphalt. And we'll stripe that, and it'll be usable uh, starting in the fall of 2019. We're not going to put this island in here, because we will be starting uh, this addition in the front of the building in the summer, or actually in the spring of 2020. Uh, one of the things we've had to do with the district is uh, the offices that are in this area right here, some of the services. Uh, the way this building is built, the existing roof gets torn off right here going forward so that we can put the addition in. And trying to keep these folks uh, in here with all the noise on this side, what's going to be happening here, we're looking at alternative space, uh, and we don't have a lot there. We have very little swing space whatsoever. So we've looked up here, this room right here, uh, we're pretty sure this is going to become the main entrance to the school. We'll move the security over here. Uh, if we can fit uh, everybody in the front office into this room, and there's another small conference area on this side, we'll do that. We're also reserving this space right in here which right now is grass uh, for the potential to put two or three double wide trailers in there. We wouldn't put any program in there, uh, but we would put support staff, different things. And those negotiations are still ongoing. We're just, we're trying to make sure who needs to be where, how do we keep the programs running as smoothly as they can. And uh, this will go on for about 18 months as well, so that once we get this set up, um, we'll be able to move everybody back into these areas. Uh, this summer, uh, the audit, or summer of 2019, uh, that uh, is currently the auditorium. It's got the slope floor. First thing we're going to do is fill that, flatten it out, and this is going to be our cafeteria space uh, for a year and a half until we get the other areas done. Uh, uh, working with Lou and the cafeteria folks, they've committed to continue hot lunch programs for the children. So we have to get some area for uh, preparation and serving. They'll cook the food elsewhere, bring it here, and serve the children. Uh, these areas right here, these existing wings, these all get uh, new heating, uh, new air conditioning, new ceilings. And what we're going to be doing is uh, we'll pick a section at a time. And similar to what we're going to be doing in this building here, we'll be doing that work on second shift throughout the year. And again, those folks will come in at 3 o'clock. They'll work until 11. When the teachers come in the next morning, it'll be like nobody was there. But again, this makes it very attractive to our contractors because they keep their people working in the wintertime. And uh, it, it works for us so that we can get this work sequenced. Normally, it would be nice to empty a wing somewhere else and we just give it to them. But again, at Council Rock, we do not have the uh, swing space to do that. 
and for everybody uh, who didn't know, this addition that we're putting on, that's being structured right now so that we can put a second story on that uh, if the district needs uh, additional space going forward. Okay? Basically, everything we're trying to do in a nutshell. So if there's questions or comments. So okay. one of the things you see, John has outlined this, our district safety committee is going to be uh, working closely with campus construction and their safety team to oversee any um, safety program, all the safety program rather, for this. So we'll have building level safety teams that are um, overseeing construction and working on adapting our emergency safety plans really on a weekly basis. So as we're in one area, make sure all our safety uh, procedures and plans are updated. Uh, so the district safety committee will participate in that and team level or building level safety teams will be working on that as well. So we'll be constantly monitoring. Um, campus will be meeting with the building principal and his or her um, cabinet, whatever structure they set up at the building levels on a weekly basis to go over schedule, what's going to happen. Uh, and uh, what the potential disruptions may be during the school year. And certainly we're coordinating all summer programs, coordinating off areas that would have asbestos abatement so we can um, accomplish as much as we uh, as possible during the summer months as well. Excellent. Thank you. I, I just, John and Emily, I want to thank you for uh, this, but what people wouldn't know is the amount of time that you spent working with the building, working with Lou to try and figure out the least disruptive ways to do this. It's going to be incredibly disruptive. Uh, however, the product will be wonderful when, when the space is finished. There's really no other way around it other than to be as thoughtful as possible in, in designing the phasing to minimize disruption for kids and teachers. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Know, you. It's a big Good task. So, thanks. So now it's my pleasure to um, introduce uh, Pastor Marla Washington, Dr. Marla Washington, Pastor Dr. Marla Washington, or as he would like to be called, Marlo Washington, who's our uh, diversity consultant in the district and is going to be giving a summary of the work done so far by the Diversity Equity Committee and what he's been up to. Thanks, Marlo. Thank you, Dr. McCown. And to Mr. Katanovich and members of the board, it's such an honor to meet you and to be here and members of the community. It's good to see you. And my name, as you Heard, I'm Marlo, and uh, it's just good to see you all and to be here so that we can come and share the good work, a lot of good stuff that's taking place, but, but a lot of hard stuff that is happening. Um, and we're trying to put a, a happy face on some of the hard stuff and some of the things that might be difficult uh, to experience. I always think that, you know, when you're dealing with institutional racism or you're dealing with structural racism of whatever nature, that brings a lot of sad faces, and rightfully so, but we try to uh, create a, a, a happy, uh, happy medium, happy spin, that something good will come out of this. Something great will come out of this. And so I'm just happy to be part of the process and to be part of the struggle, because this is all of us involved. Um, now I'm not just a consultant of diversity, but I have a very um, intimate heart and place in, in, in Brighton schools because my son uh, comes from this district. He graduated from BHS uh, in 2014. So we were involved um, and we were engaged for a long time, a long time in this. So it's just good to be with family. I call this family and to share with all of you. So um, we uh, are here because the district it really, as far as I'm concerned, the district uh, really helped to fight half this battle by recognizing that there are some structural problems and there are some structural issues within our district and within the community as a whole that the district said we can't run away from, that we've got to begin to address. We've got to begin to look at uh, institutional racism or biases that are occurring that might stop the effectiveness of learning and workforce diversity. And so the, pro the part of the, the good news is that we have a, an incredible great district that wants to, to look at this eyeball to eyeball and begin to confront this matter once and for all. And so they picked little me um, to help to create uh, a comprehensive strategy and an assessment to begin the process of how do we look at this 
this comprehensive assessment and this framework of organizational change when we're talking about diversity and equity work. So let's begin by talking about my charge. The charge came back in the summer where I am to assist in providing a comprehensive assessment and offer a framework for organizational change. I, 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 you, you can't see that because I can't see that. Um, my glass, I wear glasses and I can't see that. Um, so, so I'm gonna just change the format a little bit and, and, and we go from there. So, so uh, the, like I said, my charge is to provide a, a comprehensive assessment and to offer a framework for organizational change regarding diversity and equity in Brighton schools. Now, as part of the process, the resulting framework that we see is to help school leaders focus on the big picture, the big picture that systematically leverages diversity and equity for student learning, but also for workforce diversity um, in an institutional diversity excellence. So we, we're, we're really trying to purport the idea of, of creating a beloved community and one that celebrates differences and that not everybody is the same. And how do we incorporate that? How do we deal with that and address that, not as something bad, but something good, something, something wonderful? And so as part of that process, uh, my role is to help deliver and provide, if anything, a fresh perspective, a very fresh perspective on evidence-based uh, approaches and practices um, to inclusive excellence. And, 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 and culture and a sustainability that will last longer than any of us in this room um, over time in the Brighton schools. And secondly, to provide a sort of a connection, a connection um, to the educational quality and inclusion efforts more fundamentally as well as more comprehensively than, than we've ever done before. Uh, thirdly, is to develop a concept of diversity. Now, you know, when you go in different settings and when you go in different places and institutions, everybody defines diversity different than the next. So one of our roles is to help define diversity that best fits Brighton and, and, and tailored to Brighton and who Brighton is in terms of the diversity, the culture, in terms of what we are about and define it and then live out the definition live out the definition according to the uniqueness and the personality of Brighton and everything and the riches that Brighton offers to all. This is what we, we stand uh, to, to deal with. So the idea is to develop a concept or definition of diversity as a process um, towards better learning and working in the district as an outcome for all. Now as part of this process, the, the charge came whereby uh, I have three kinds of roles within the role of what I do as a consultant of diversity. And the first is, the, um, is to facilitate the diversity and equity committee. This is a team of folks that comprise of the district staff and faculty, uh, 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 community members, as well as students. But we wanted to make sure as part of that recommendation that that committee is also a resemblance of our community as a whole and that the, all of us are part of this. So we're dealing with a, a wonderful fabric of, of diversity coming from within that committee because that committee helps to purport to the larger community what we ought to be about in terms of a diversity as a whole. And so as part of that picture, um, the Diversity and Equity Committee has designed three, and this is based out of the blueprint plan, has three committees. These committees led by three wonderful, incredible individuals of the staff of the district, Carolyn, uh, uh, Lou, and Debbie Baker. Um, Debbie is the co-chair or chair of our subcommittee on family engagement. The idea of family engagement is an important one because I often like to think of family engagement as a, as, a, as a place where people are welcome and engaging the families to the district, the district to the family. So it's making the district a welcoming destination. That's what that's about. I like to use that in that language with, with Karen. And Karen is somewhere around here. Uh, oh, uh, uh, not Karen, I'm sorry, Debbie. And uh, there she is. Uh, and and so, so it's part of the role of becoming 
a, fam a welcoming destination and making people welcome as part of the district and included into the fabric, into the life, into the life blood, the life stream of the district. And so that's one of the inner workings there. Then the next is, is headed by Lou, who, who is uh, doing a great job with the construction. And then now he got to come on the other side uh, to uh, the hiring practice. And so the hiring practice is dealing with a practice where we are trying to develop cutting edge practices to recruit and retain a diverse workforce in the Brighton schools and figuring out ways how we can, can do that. Now, you know, one of the things in, in a formal uh, relationship that I've had in this, in this type of field was relating the district or the institution with the percentage of, 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 of the student or, or the customer in that regards, who we have. So for instance, if there's 10% of per persons of color in the district, then we need to match it with that same, that same percentage or better. But that's a minimum standard that we set. We can go higher, but we can't go lower. And so this is just an example of what it looks like in terms of the hiring practice. Um, then the last is headed by Carolyn, uh, who is in, uh, responsible for special education. And that is, is an idea um, uh, situation there because it is a, a place where it's providing a culturally responsive pedagogy that's, that demonstrates uh, the educational benefits of a diverse learning uh, community who needs additional help. So as part of that, as part of that, um, that learning, if you just give me just a second, I want to share with you, um, with special ed particularly, um, they're, they're, one of their roles is, and topics of interest is to look at the district's classification uh, rates by race, gender, and age. The same thing in terms of looking at the declassification rate by race, gender, age. Share the definition of special education. Um, uh, develop current programming and what types of learners are in each of those programs. How are classified students being included and how are they being classified? So these are the various types of topics and areas of interest that, um, that uh, this particular committee is looking into. In addition to those, those three committees, this is where I serve as a facilitator. But the real work is the committees. These committees uh, meet probably all the time within the quarter. We meet quarterly. And so within the quarter, these committees are meeting uh, to begin to report in to the larger committee so that we can thread all of the reports that we have and then we begin to link a comprehensive strategy on how we're going to deliver uh, the, the message of diversity and diversity and inclusive excellence. One of the, the that's the first, the first uh, task of what I'm to do, but the second task what I'm to do is to listen and hear constituents. And that, that makes, that, that comprise of uh, uh, members of the district, uh, families, parents, students, uh, faculty, anybody who have an interest in, 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 in Brighton, in Brighton schools, and we meet. I have been meeting for the last several weeks at Starbucks, and that's one of my office now. And, 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 and we sit and we talk and we engage because part of the, the idea of meeting people is to help facilitate what we need to know from the community because the community shapes what it is that we're doing in this work as well. And that which we learn, we feed to the Diversity and Equity Committee to look for patterns and to look for, for interesting threads that we can help link and thread into the strategic uh, strategy or the strategy towards the blueprint. And so, and one other, um, and last, in terms of my role, uh, is to co-advise the Black Student Union at the high school. And so that's been a very interesting um, task, where I meet every Wednesday with students of uh, the uh, Black Student Union at Brighton High. And it's just to be a support, just to continue to be a support system for them. Uh, if they want to talk, and, and I'm there, and we share, and we, we do all of that good stuff. Uh, we play all kinds of games, and Uno, um, and, and Jenga, and all kinds of other games they're teaching me. 
and, and we're learning. So we're learning each other and learning about some of the things that they are looking at in terms of structural barriers, in terms of what we need to look for in those structural barriers, and how do we lift those structural barriers and put them in its proper perspective and go from there. And so part, this work is now beginning. This work is really, really um, um, gaining a lot of steam now. We are really moving forward in putting uh, those structures together. But one other thing that we are doing, in addition to all of the things I've mentioned, we are now beginning to meet as a community once every quarter and in a forum that we're calling it Be the Healing, Be the Healing Forum, which will take place, the first one taking place on December 13th at 7 o'clock, December 13th at 7 o'clock at the central office, and we welcome everybody to come where we are going to use a, another community forum so that that becomes a feeder on behalf of the, district, of the uh, Diversity and Equity Committee. This helps the Diversity and Equity Committee to understand what the larger community is talking and saying, what we should be seeing, what we should be doing. And so it's not enough just from the Diversity and Equity Committee. We want to continue to expand the process to open it with the entire community so that this is a completely well-vetted process so that we can continue to form and shape um, a comprehensive assessment and shaping a new framework of diversity and, and, and begin to, to implement those, those diversity uh, initiatives by September of 2019. So this work is, is beginning, and, and, and you know, it's a, it's like I said earlier, it's hard, but it's, it's meaningful. It's, 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 it's something where you, I believe, will be proud of because it lends to the idea of a community of one, a community of one coming together regardless of, of learning abilities, regardless of color, regardless of any, anything in life that we are, doesn't matter, but that we come together as one and we shape that life together and we are becoming part of that community. Like I said to members of the, of the board, you help create half the battle in a lot of ways because at least you openly confront what is hard, what is difficult that some folks don't want to deal with, some folks don't want to talk about. But, but, but we appreciate the fact that Brighton Schools is, is in, the, in, the, in, in the vanguard, ready to deal with this issue and ready to begin to tackle some of these issues head on. Now, some folks are still living in an unrealistic reality. They do not think that there is any type of biases or, or racism or anything that goes on lurking in our community. But I always got this little thing, where there are people, there are problems. You know, and, 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 and so, so the issue is there's some problems, even if you don't recognize it, there's some problems. And those are the things we've got to deal with and we've got to look, look forward to. And so again, as I close, I, I want to say that it's, a, it's an honor to work with so many, I've, I've tell you, I've, I've met with so many people, it's just a joy, walking particularly in the schools and seeing the little ones and seeing the big ones and, and, and just being in the halls and just talking and just looking at the great work that folks are doing. The teachers have been phenomenal meeting with me, sitting down, wanting to talk about this, how to incorporate a, a culturally uh, sensitive pedagogy in their classroom, being more sensitive to the needs of what's going on in their classroom and sitting down with several, many teachers, not several, but many teachers since September. And it's been wonderful. And so I just want to thank you all for the opportunity of coming here to be with you. I'm looking forward to continue on. And let me tell you, even when I'm done in June, I'm not done. And so I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna be around and we're gonna continue on doing what we have to do. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. I think Marlo should start everything out. I don't know about you, but I always feel like I'm in a better mood every time I hear him have anything to say. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a, a note also, we have been um, thinking a lot about these issues and, and I'd like to paraphrase a friend and colleague who's here, Wynette Vectors, and thank you for coming, who said, as we encountered this work uh, over the summer and dug into it, having had a committee last year and this being an important issue uh, in the district, that although these issues may exist elsewhere and institutional 
uh, racism, systemic racism, institutional or implicit bias, um, issues related to diversity and equity might be all around our, our community, our county, our city, our state, our nation, and it's clear to us all the time, issues of all the isms are things that we need to be dealing with, that we should be able to in this district lead the way. And so thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to lead the way. Marlo, thank you for helping us in that direction too. Another uh, aspect of this that we've been looking at is restorative justice as well. Our leadership team is knee deep in the process right now of analyzing all of our discipline data from years past and better understanding on a case by case basis why referrals are made, what the disposition of those referrals are, and trying to understand the best we can how students are treated within that system and how equitably they are treated while looking at restorative programming going forward and thinking more about how we can promote a different sense of peace, tolerance, and understanding in our practices as opposed to other uh, more coercive discipline practices that don't necessarily result in change in behavior and are ripe for inequities as well. So uh, we're, we're in the process of working on that. So a lot of people are part of that, as you can see, uh, throughout our updates and updates that were given at 5 o'clock today in the earlier meeting, which are all online, uh, throughout the curriculum and thinking about inclusive and culturally responsive curriculum, that's been a big part of the work as well. So there's really threads of this throughout uh, the blueprint plan and the different work happening in the district. So thanks to our staff for their work on that. Their openness, our uh, BTA uh, President Judy Wegman is here tonight. Our staff's been, I think, very, very open to the risk taking and the vulnerability that it requires to really dig into very difficult topics. As you said, Merle, the hard things, and we really greatly appreciate that. So our focus for tonight in having a community forum is a little bit different than it's been in the past. So there are some people here who have been to a lot of these, and this is completely different. Uh, it sometimes feels as though, and those who, who have been to these in the past, uh, when we sit here and you sit there, it feels uh, like a question and answer, and almost when it's an answer, it can seem or feel either defensive or just an answer to a question as opposed to a really good discussion. So you have to pardon the former second grade teacher, but one of the ways we talked about questioning when I was in the classroom was about how when you answer a question, thinking sometimes stops. So a bunch of kids have their hands up in the classroom, and as soon as you say right, wrong, or indicate to the rest of the class an answer, one specific answer, then people aren't thinking as much. The rest of the class moves on to the next question. And that tends to happen when it's a question answer type of format. But a forum that's really designed for us to actually gather feedback and hear feedback from you is likely to be better facilitated by having groups and a group discussion. So what we'd like to do in a minute or so, we planned on about a half hour, so we're going to go a little bit over the 7 to 8 o'clock time frame, is ask you to split up between, there's four tables there and four tables there, these two groups. Dennis Spagnola, assistant principal here at Frez, and Dr. Elson Rio, the principal here at Frez, and thank you for being our host tonight, are going to facilitate the two groups. And it's facilitation light. In other words, they are simply going to start by asking the group sitting there, how are we doing? What's on your mind? What other feedback do you have for us? Or what questions do you have for us that we can answer? And it is not devoted to one topic there, one topic there. Both groups can cover any topic, the topics that we've talked about tonight in our updates, or anything else that may be on your mind. We'd like to gather feedback on anything that's going on. They will be taking notes on the easels and literally just listening to the conversation. Board members will be split up between the two groups, as will the administrators. So you might wonder, while you're having that discussion, well, why aren't they answering my question? Why aren't they engaging in this necessarily? The intent very much, and I've begged the board members, who would love to explain some things to you because we're working on it, really would like to talk about these things, is, is a very intentional effort to listen to very much listen to your feedback so that the thinking can keep happening. Now, if you have a specific question that somebody can clarify, they would love to, we would all love to, but the focus is going to be on listening very, very intentionally. And uh, we'll approach that and see how far we can get just gathering as much feedback from you as possible. Don't hesitate to ask a question that somebody can answer on the spot, but we'd like to focus much more on a discussion and hearing what you have to say more than anything. And for other community members to hear what each person has to say as opposed to just what we have to say answering from up there. So hopefully this will foster a really good dialogue. We'll get some great feedback from you and, and continue to try and reflect in our planning the feedback that we're getting from you at sessions like this. So divide yourselves up. Go whichever side you'd like. Like I said, there's not one topic, one place or another. And we'll go to about quarter after eight or so. And thanks very much for coming. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.